Is that better? Whatever I'm saying is echoing. So it's a difficult for me to. Please switch on your video. Please switch on your video. Okay, sir. Your video is not switched on. Please switch on. Your voice is not audible. Please mute, unmute your voice. Please unmute. Again. Hi. Okay, good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? This is it. Yes, I, we Namaste. can hear you. I am a chef and I've been working on some stuff with IVAC. So I thought I made this presentation for one of my previous clients. So I thought I'd share it with us. And it's a very general, uh, it's reiterating what we already know with in comparison to a lot of the Ayurvedic stuff that does happen around here in IVAC. And also all the principles and little bit of information that I have gathered from talking to the doctors and interacting with them and reading some of the texts. So this is about wellness cuisine and I like to cook food that is basically good for the person consuming it. I'm conscious of that and that's where my journey of this starts. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what is wellness. Wellness, of course, it's, we also only consider it from a physical point of view, but it's all our consumption. It's an everyday choice we make. It is what we consume inside our body, what we consume in our mind through information, what we consume when we see something, what we consume when we hear something. So I think wellness would encompass all of that. And I wanted to start this talk with what is wellness and how can we be mindful of choosing well in all our aspects of our life, especially food, because that directly goes into us. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit also about what is conscious consumption. 
health like i said is an everyday choice and conscious consumption is basically what i think and can put categorically into what our ancestors did before we had a very highly processed world what were our ancestors what were people who you know say 50 years back 60 years back what kind of diets and lifestyles they were living so i would say conscious consumption as taught by our ancestors would be following the law of nature uh, eating according to the timings of the sun uh, eating according to where you are which location you are and the effect of nature around you in in your body then consuming more whole ingredients as opposed to processed ingredients so in we are lucky in a country like india and lot of like asian countries we have all of those whole grains farming so our ancestors kind of consumed that and they had lesser lifestyle diseases which is what we are all subjected to right now and also the third important thing that they did was incorporate some form of movement so movement can either be in form of like your daily exercise yoga in the uh, asian countries they have like tai chi so anything that basically gets your body moving along with being conscious of what you put into your body in general kind of encompasses wellness uh, i would also like to make you all think uh, just you know a question put a question out there that what we are eating is it consuming us or are we consuming the food so what we put into our body what is the effect of that in us is it making us duller is it making us you know not as optimally functioning as we should or whatever are we are eating are we actually consuming it and using it for the energy that we need to live our life so next time when you are uh, uh, you know in a space or or want to think about this maybe you can observe what it is that what is the nature of your food consumption and that in general encompasses wellness to me so now i want to move on to talking about There's no audio. Can you hear me now? Okay. So I was just talking about what is Ayurveda in a very short uh, way. Moving on to I. this is not moving so just let me tell you a small anecdote like uh, this is not regarding uh, ayurveda and indian uh, food but there's an island in japan it's called uh, it's called it's called okinawa and basically they have the highest number of centenarians in that space in that island and one of the things when scientists were researching on what they were eating they were eating very high uh, they were eating a macrobiotic diet which is basically a lot of whole foods they were eating lesser processed grains and uh, they were also in sync with what was in nature over there and that just a small example to show that in this day and age on that island we have the most number of people who are 100 years old so 
maybe we can learn something from there we can learn the fact that they are respecting their consumption pattern they eat a lot of uh, you know traditional japanese ingredients which have a lot of antioxidants uh, high in flavonoids so this kind of cuisine is consumed by them so just to share with you that it is possible to live a very healthy life if we be mindful of what we are kind of eating the next thing i want to talk about sorry the slide is okay so now i want to talk about the energy of food so this is something i think we can also uh, think deeply about so in ayurveda there is a concept and also in yoga of prana which is the which is the life force and energy of food is while there is a lot you can do to take care of your physical and mental well being what are we doing for our gut because when we are eating a certain kind of food it is directly first going into our stomach and impacting our gut so energy of food kind of that topic comes up to me uh, in to bring it to correlation to what's actually going on in our gut and in our uh, gut and in general in our bodies there are there are four types of hormones, hormones happy hormones that are kind of secreted and those are dopamine serotonin oh, oxytocin and endorphin in general who is your who is your внучка kind of feel more fulfilled uh, more happy. Uh, and такое, the food that we consume actually have a deep impact on these uh, um, kind of chemicals that are being released in our brain so again going back to uh, there is a channel between our uh, head uh, between our brains like the spinal cord similarly between our brain and our stomach also there is a channel which is signaling signaling us continuously and this is something that we should also be very aware of so what foods are we eating that are kind of making us upset or angry or you know not feeling uncomfortable and then suddenly there are these lighter foods that we consume which actually increase those happy hormones inside of us so we can use the example of dark chocolate which in when someone is sad you would make them eat a chocolate right because it immediately makes you feel happy it increases those uh, uh, hormones happy hormones in your brain then cherry tomatoes has something called lycopene which again helps in boosting the serotonin and then of course like according to ayurveda the magical ingredient which is ghee which kind of as soon as you put in it helps you with overall like your mind your body and all of those things so ghee is also like a very very good fat that we should be consuming to have that effect on our body uh so now we spoke about like in general a lot of things leading up to this concept of ama which basically is uh the toxin so it is like a, a term which is used in uh, sanskrit in the ayurvedic textbook which is called in general the english meaning would be toxin so ama is uh, i want to read this the toxins that are present in our body due to the lack of proper digestion So anything that does not get digested properly kind of keeps piling on into your body and it starts forming this layer which is called ama which is toxins we can kind of look at it like a drain which is being obstructed and because the, there's an obstruction in different parts of our body due to the ama there's no proper energy flow so again what we don't digest properly is causing all these energy blockages also in our body so just to know this concept and some ways to identify the ama in our body would be like maybe say by bad breath white coating on the tongue bloating lots of mood swings because the energy is not flowing in the uh, proper channel that it should be so it's to know a little bit about ama in correlation to having a more wellness uh, you know lifestyle and from ama how do we fix this ama like what is it that we could do to kind of not have a lot of these this toxins in our body is to introduce a concept of agni so agni is basically the energy that transforms anything so when we eat something it gets transformed into different nutrition for our body through the agni in our body and of course there are so many different types of agnis in our body but the one main thing which we will talk about here 
is the digestive fire because if your agni is not in balance if it's more there's a problem if it's less there's a problem it should be as optimal as it can be for your particular body so that there is no collection of ama and there are lots of functions of agni we can we will get into some of them uh so it's like i told you it's made up of the fire elements and from ayurveda we understand that the condition of agni is responsible for vitality and well being when agni is consistently impaired the disease process begins agni is a powerful force not only because it has the ability to influence all aspects of life but but when it is functioning your mind is well and your body and brain are safe so uh, some of the basic functions of agni i would like to say is digestion absorption and assimilation of food like we discussed uh, it transmutes food into nutrition um it also helps with your metabolism and uh, also helps you with clarity and focus since you digest everything and your mind is working much better um so after talking about ama and agni what is it that is number one slowing down kind of your agni and again causing the ama to be in your body a lot is in today's day and age i would say because it's not like you know we are eating a piece of bread that was leavened uh, for 3 days overnight creating that healthy and then you know consuming it so we are eating a lot of like um processed gluten which is your white bread which again causes glycemic spike causes you to kind of not digest the food properly refined sugar which is one of the biggest uh, i would say negative forces out there which is not helping you live in the more more you know uh, healthy way and industrial dairy and meat and i use the word industrial because of course this is not about like i don't want to say what is right and what is wrong but uh, when they are producing something with growth hormones injected with you know lots of preservatives uh, not in the correct way of like kind of butchering the animal all of that is being eaten and then causing that havoc inside us so of course i'm not advocating anything uh, like if somebody eats meat or has dairy it's absolutely okay but the source of it is the cow being grazed properly is the cow being treated properly before the milk is taken out or are we just creating this man made milk which you know everyone is consuming or even in terms of like the chicken is it being cooped up in cages that that fried full energy that anxious energy what we are kind of consuming so just to be mindful of that so uh, a little bit now in at length about conscious eating uh, there is this quote i wish you guys can read it so it basically food is a love note from god its letters are written by the rays of the sun it says i love you and i shall take care of you and sustain you with the offerings of my earth if we take time to read the love letter by chewing carefully and feeling the messages that are stored in the food by the sun earth wind water and even those by even by those who have grown harvested and prepared the food it is its assimilation takes on a whole new meaning this is specific this is a specific way of receiving god's grace a holy sacrament to be experienced slowly carefully and consciously so this is basically what is the conscious eating movement which we we have been talking about certain tips to slow eat and digest your food better because at the end of the day you are what you digest so number one would be sit down and eat because that's definitely way healthier for you if you are in a flustered mind space if you are coming from somewhere which um, you know you have a lot on your mind it would be nice to kind of center yourself take a couple of deep breaths and then begin eating your meal preparing yourself for that digestion journey uh, involve all your senses so look plate your food well include colors include flavors because actually you're supposed to eat only two to three times a day so when you're making that activity make it pleasurable make it like something that's satisfying because that's also one of the rule uh, one of the goals of food to to make you feel happy through consuming it keep distractions away because uh, we think that we are just eating 
but actually we are doing one of the most important activities of the day because if we don't eat we don't have that energy and again in this world which we are so stimulated we are like maybe looking at our phone watching something uh, it's not helping we are kind of dividing that energy which we should be using only and solely to digest into other things so be mindful of that and also eat with your hands because hands give you that sensory experience of again being satiated if you can eat with your hands it it tastes better the food and again you're involving all of your senses so uh, it's also connecting with yourself that activity so these are like some tips for flow eating uh, another thing that we can look into while we are talking about like wellness food and how to you know not be a victim to diet not be a victim to like eating less or uh, just constantly you know being like okay am i okay optimally weight wise am i eating a lot like you know those dialogues that we always have in our brain is to kind of include all the six tastes inside uh, in on a, on your plate so according to ayurveda there are six tastes which are madhur amla lavana chitta ushna and kashaya and if in our plate we could put all these six flavors in different forms that's why we have spices so in uh, Uh, wellness cuisine and in general when we are trying to eat healthy we do include a lot of spices for different medicinal properties and each of these spices have certain flavor profile so if we cook that a particular dish mindfully and include all these six tastes firstly we are making everything tastier for us and also using food as medicine which is what ayurveda kind of advocates and now back home when you go how would you create a balance meal so a perfect example is a thali you know nowadays it's like everyone saying oh my god don't eat so much fat don't eat carbs don't eat this don't eat that there's so much of fear mongering but if we actually look closely none of that is sustainable what is sustainable is putting a little bit of everything on your plate if you have a condition of course you ask the doctor what it is that you don't need to include but if you are okay and you just want to continue being as healthy as you can be there should not be something that you're afraid of like we should not be afraid of food we should try to eat everything in a moderation and in a manner that is helping our system so to create the uh, thali i would say of course include whole grains and maybe you don't want to eat wheat you don't want to eat maida because something is there about the gluten that's not suiting you due to the nature of that particular uh, food item now Uh, you know it went through a lot of genetic modification it's not as the quality is not like how it used to be in the past so include millet include whole grains include different varieties of rice that you can find uh vegetables some sort of source of protein that protein can be from your dal it can be from any other source of protein that you would wish to eat and again to be mindful of that so suppose if you're eating an egg okay. keep it to like a free range if you're eating some kind of a, you know dairy product as your protein make sure that the milk is not hopefully coming out of a packet so keep all of those things in mind of uh, fermented food i've written fermented foods over here but actually i mean a little bit of like a pickle or something to enhance your taste buds because that also again satisfies you and makes the whole experience wholesome definitely good fat i think if you are drinking 1 liter of ghee it's bad but if you are putting one spoon of ghee on your plate to complete your meal you should do that there is nothing like oh i'm on a diet and i should not have a good good like you know source of ghee or coconut oil or some sort of uh, good fat it can come from your seeds and nuts also this source of fat and uh, of course fruit as per ayurveda we will not mix it with our food but yes include that at some point in your day to get the natural uh, you know uh, the natural sweetness which nature has to offer the fructose all of those into your body so pick a time and eat a nice whole fruit and enjoy it as you would any other sugary dessert so this is how you would create a balanced plate nothing uh, of like you know to be scared of or nothing to overdo and yes this is what maybe a balanced plate would look like there is some puri also there is like a little bit of curd there is vegetables so that's uh, just something i had prepared for you all i hope you all enjoyed it is there any questions you all would like to ask
so uh, i feel like raw food it's very subjective subjective so a lot of people can digest the raw food but like it's again going to the agni so the reason i spoke about the agni over here is if your agni is not in an optimal condition and you start putting raw food into your body you are going to face difficulties because as simple as the plant also has a cellulose matter okay if you are if your body is not being able to break that down the reason is to cook food is to break that down and then consume it so your uh, digestion is not being put under pressure but suppose you have a great agni and you can eat a salad and you don't have any bloating you don't have any uh, you know problems over there then sure i guess just watching your body the reason that they say to not have uh, the raw food i think as per ayurveda is because your digest it puts pressure on your digestion am i right doctor in a way okay okay <laughs> the question okay perfect and just to answer from my perspective not from anything but i just feel like our digestive tract is you can say one of the biggest organs of your body right with the small intestine so now just imagine if you are putting that pressure on such a big organ it's taking the energy of the other organ to kind of you know function and then i am assuming i'm not a doctor but something is happening over there like you know you have to you, you want to work this but you don't want to overwork because the rest of it is then kind of getting depleted so just like literally looking at our bodies as machine number one you know and uh, what i think what we intend to do lots of times and this is again my personal opinion is uh, we start thinking too much from our mind about this but we forget that actually our mind and our body and uh, who we actually are are separate so when we can view those three entities and then just be like okay fine this is my machine this is my like you can say my software the brain so then we kind of don't start believing only what our mind is telling us about the food stuff and the information we gather and all of that so i feel like uh, any other question okay. i hope you all had fun <laughs> listening to me i'm also a chef so if you all need any recipes i'm around for a couple of please just like walk past and uh, ask me if you all want any recipes i'm happy to share i love to cook healthy food and uh, i'm very very grateful that i have given me the opportunity to do something with them so i'm freelancing right now so i mean i my base is from calcutta like my parents live there but i travel for work a lot so i'm usually in different places through the year Okay thank you so much How much time did I